So for this video, I'll be working through question one of the level two 2016 mechanics exam. Question one, Sarah releases a red car from rest down a slope of 0.5 meters. The red car accelerates steadily and reaches a speed of 1.5 meters per second. When it gets to the bottom of the slope, calculate the acceleration of the red car as it moves down the slope. So before we even start, let's write what we've got. So we've got a distance is equal to 0 0.5 meters. I'm just going to, well, I'll check another zero in because it's there. Um, the initial velocity is equal to 0 meters per second. Final velocity, the F, um, is equal to 1.5 meters per second. Um, and we're trying to find the acceleration question mark. So if we use our formula sheet, here's our formula sheet here. We have the initial velocity, we have the distance, we have the final velocity, and we're trying to work out the acceleration. Um, we'll probably pick this formula here. So we'll chuck that in. Um, we're going to write that, write that down here. So Vf squared equals Vi squared one uh, plus 2ad yep now we know, all we need to do now is rearrange for the acceleration so I'm just going to put a wee arrow to show my rearranging vf squared minus vi squared equals 2ad now all I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2ad so I'm going to cancel out 2 and d over here divide by 2d and that'll give me uh, Vf squared is 1.5 squared divided by 2 meters which is equal to if you plug that into your calculator 2.25 meters per second minus 2 but 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 the least amount of significant figures that significant figures they've given us is 2 so here's 3 but the least is 2 so it means our answer has to be 2, two significant figures it means we need to round up so down the bottom we've got A equals 2.3 meters per second minus 2. So that's the 2SF because the least amount is 2 in the question. Right, next question. At the bottom of the slope the track is flat. The red car is moving with a speed of 1.5 meters per second. Collides with a stationary blue car. The mass of the blue car is 0.4 kilograms. Um, and we have a wee diagram here to show sort of what's happening. Um, if the velocity of the blue car after the collision is 1.2 meters per second, so it's given here, calculate the velocity of the red car after the collision. So this is a momentum question, um, tucked in with the rest of the motion questions. Um, so first and foremost, the thing we always say with momentum is the P is a letter or symbol for momentum. So the initial momentum is always equal to the final momentum. Um, Assuming no external forces, and there doesn't seem to be any external forces, it's probably neglecting friction. Doesn't say, but you know it should. Um, so our initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. So that just basically means. Um, so you notice the ones and the twos. So everything with a one on it, all my subscripts with one, uh, are going to be. You know this car here, and this car here. It's got three and four. Maybe I'll stick with three and four as well. But yeah, why not? So M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equal to M3 uh, V3 plus M4, uh, whoops, V4. That's a bit of a mouthful. Right, so uh, let's just put that into numbers now. So our mass of the red car M1 is 0.5 kilograms. So 0, uh, 0 0.05 kilograms, that's 50 grams, um, times velocity 1.5 plus uh, blue car, 0 meters per second, uh, well the mass of the blue car I should say, 0.4 kilograms, 0 0.04 uh, 0 kilograms times 0 equals m3 M3 is, so mass of the red car again, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, I know it's 0, 0.5, 0 times uh, V3, or the one that we don't know, plus M4, the blue car again, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04,
times and the velocity of the fourth one is 1.22 right so from here you could easily just calculate everything you could rearrange you can plug this into your calculator use a solver um, six one way half a dozen the other it doesn't really matter but I'll tell you this is equal to zero so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cross it out but this is equal to 0 0.075 so 0 0.075 is equal to 0 0.05 V3 plus 0 0.048 so this here is equal to 0 0.048 I'm going to leave the units out just to save the mess um, once I rearrange that, I'll get 0 0.075 minus 0 0.048 and then so I've moved that over to this side by subtracting it and now I'm going to divide, so then I'm just left with I'm left with this here and then I divide both sides by 0 0.05 so I'm going to put brackets around here just because 0 0.05, that'll equal V3 so that, once you calculate it through you plug that into your calculator, V3 equals 0 0.54 uh, 54 meters per second minus 1. And notice two, it has to be in 2S. Oh, can we see that? It has to be in 2SF because that's two significant figures. Everything's given to us in two significant figures. All the weights aren't, the weights aren't, but we always, we always round to the least significant figures in the question, which happens to be the velocity. So our velocity has to be two significant figures. Done. Next question. If the duration of the collision was 0.8 seconds, calculate the average force that the red car exerts in the blue car. So if we hop onto our formula sheet again, can we see it there? Um, change momentum equals force times change in time. So let's just write that in. Change, can we see that? And momentum equals uh, force times change in time. And this is also impulse, so impulse, change of momentum is also known as impulse, um, just for you, if you're interested. Um, so, okay, duration is, so we've got time is 0 0.8, 0 0.08, um, but we don't know what the change of momentum, so it's the force that the red car exerts on the blue car. But, the force that the red car exerts on the blue car is the same as the force that the blue car exerts on the red car, and that's Newton's third law. So that just basically means if we find the change in momentum of the blue car, um, that's still the change in momentum of, of the red car as well, because this was originally stationary. So if we go to our formula, uh, if we go to our working here, this was originally the change of momentum. So it went from uh, not moving at all to no momentum at all to um, having the mass times the velocity and that was 0 0.048. So we calculated that here. I don't know where is it here. So we calculated that here, um, 0 0.048. So actually that change of momentum is 0 0.048. You could have calculated over over the page as well, but you don't have to, you've already calculated it, so it's 0 0.048 kg meters per second minus 1, because it's mass times velocity, that's momentum. Right, so we've got a change in momentum, we've got the change in time, so let's just do some rearranging to find force. So if I divide both sides by a time, I'm going to get force just by itself, so change in P over change in time equals 0 0.048 divided by 0.08 equals, what is that equal? 0.06 if I remember right, no, 0.60 Newtons. Notice that that is just a placeholder, so we have to have two SF, two centrifuges, as the question before as well, so this has to be two centrifuges, done. Right, on another occasion, the red car was going around a circular part of the track at a constant speed. Name the force acting on the car and draw the labelled vector on the diagram above to show the direction of the force acting on the car at the instant shown. Right, so the force is friction, and this is something that really grinds my gears because even in the marking schedule, it gives you points if you write um, centripetal, which is wrong. Centripetal isn't a force in of itself, it's a description of a branch of forces. It's Latin for centre pointing. Um, it's friction that makes the car turn the corner and so let's put our vector on as well and let's use a ruler 
I've got my ruler with me, yes I do. Center pointing, so that means let's just draw that's roughly our center there. So we're gonna have a force acting towards the center. There we go, you can draw it as big as you like because it doesn't say I'm gonna put this F R and then we'll put a subscript over here. F R equals friction. Friction force. That'll do. Um, and just for brevity, just so we're gonna we're gonna classify this force and we put this is a center pointing, so centra centripetal, centripetal, however you like to pronounce it. So that's the type of force it is because it's a center pointing force um, acting towards the center, acting towards the center. And I feel like NCA probably changed the marking schedule to include centripetal so more people don't fail because it seems to be a common misconception or whatever that centripetal is a force. It's not for the last time. It's it's a branch of forces. It's a name of a type of force. It's not a force in and of itself. Anyway, I'll stop discussing that. Right. Discuss the effect of the force on the size and direction of the velocity of the car. So it doesn't change the speed of the car at all because it's acting at right angles. So let's just write that now. It doesn't change. Velocity as the force is acting at 90 degrees. You see that? To the velocity. So that's the, what happens to the size, absolutely nothing, but it does change the direction. So it changes, oh, let me see that. It looks like an H, doesn't it? It's meant to be an it. Changes the direction of Around the circle. Right, so what I've said is I said it changes the direction of the velocity, causing the car to go around in the circle because the force is pushing at 90 degrees to the velocity. And does that actually answer the question? The effect of the force on the size, yeah, done size, done direction of, and that happens to be the red car.